Okay, good enough, good enough. Okay, so that's my basic little robot structure, right? Looks pretty good. Okay, so now the light. So now I just had my light coming from the side and down. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and say like, okay, this part here is where the light is catching, right? Right off the side here. And the light's coming down this way. And in the future, you know, I don't know as I need to draw light rays, but I want you to for now, because I really want to clarify the concept. So it's coming down here, and this is where the direction of it is. So light's just coming from the side. And so here's this oval here. I know if I was to draw an oval about that same size, right there, that's where the shadow of the head would be. And so then I've got the oval here for the bottom. And so I say like, okay, this is coming off of here. Same direction, all parallel. Right? It's going to the same place on that same horizontal line. And I say like, okay, well, what's that oval all about? It's a little bit bigger. Starts right over here, ends over here. And so I can have this other bigger oval. That's also part. And if I just connect those two, that's making the shadow for the head. And the head takes up most of it. I think that the way I've drawn it, the head is actually larger than the cube that makes up the body. So that's no big deal. So let's see here. That would be somewhere down in here, right? This would be, you could find it, but I don't think you need to. And then here, you know, you, you'd have the shadow coming off of here. So same sort of thing. Here's the light rays for this, right? And as that's coming down, it's going to hit here. So that means that this is all in shadow as well. It all gets covered up. Okay, so that shadow was actually really easy. Now, you'll notice here that I've got a shadow on the leg. And that's a nice little touch right there to see how that shadow would fall on the leg. How did I figure that out? Well, I just figured, okay, so if I've got the shadow coming here, light's coming this way, comes off the corner of this cube, right? And then, you know, I can still kind of see where the cube was on the other side. And I, and I say like, okay, the light's going to come in this way. Come on, baby. There it is. And so we've got this light coming in here. I can figure, okay, well, anywhere along that plane is where the light's going to be hitting and where the light's, or I should say, where the shadow's going to be hitting. And where's left is where the light's going to be. So I can say like, okay, well, this is hitting right here. This is where this intersects, right? So I can just come across here and then I can just come up here and figure like, okay, well, th if this was a plane, where would it be hitting here? And it'd be hitting right up about here. So if this was a solid object instead of just light, right? It'd be going through here. So that's where your shadow would be. I know that might be a little confusing. It's hard to explain exactly. But if you just figure it, that if that was, instead of light, a piece of paper or a board or something that was dissecting this guy, where would it be? And it would act in the same way, you know, as the light would and the shadow would. Okay. Anyways, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. But in any case, I know that that is where my light would end up for my shadow. Okay. All right, so for the purposes of this drawing, you know, I want you to leave those light rays in, maybe even neaten them up a little bit. Okay, so let's see here. Maybe a couple little eyes on my robot. All righty. And a little smile, because just, you know, why not? There's my little smile on my little robot. And start to shade, right? Okay, so I've got this coming out this way, right? Here is where the center of this is. Here's where the center of this is. 
So I know that where that dissects, and that other one, that's going to be right there. That is going to be where the edge is on that shadow. Okay, remember the cylinder that we've done before. It all works the same. So I can start to shade a little bit. So I'll make my core shadow right in here. And just bring that around to the edge. And then it's going to get a little bit lighter as it comes down over here to where that intersection was. Okay. And I'll just go ahead and use my finger to soften that up a little bit. Okay. Maybe even erasing away a little bit of that. Okay, but let's just get it light over here. Okay. The top now, the top would stay pretty light, wouldn't it? So we'll just pretty much leave that one alone. And I'll redraw some of my details in there that I lost. Okay, and I think I'll go ahead and even put a little bit of shading into these guys here to make them a little bit more three-dimensional. Now the neck would be totally in shadow, covered up by that whole head right there. And I believe that most of this would be in shadow. I think maybe if I was to come here, I would see that maybe there's a little bit of this square that is not, maybe just the corner right there. So we'll shade in most, most of this guy right here. See, the important thing is not that you draw an exact copy of my robot. The important thing is that you get the concepts so that when you're drawing your own thing, you can kind of just understand why and how things work so that you can make your own things and make your own decisions. Okay, and so even though this is in shadow, I'll still give it a little bit of differentiation, a little bit of a gradient, because otherwise you won't really see how that neck comes around here. Okay. Okay, and so then this side here, this would be darker here, wouldn't it? Because it's in the shadow. And this side over here, now it's not totally in shadow, but it's not having light hitting on it directly. So I'm going to go ahead and shade that in a bit. These guys down here, they are in shadow, aren't they? I'm going to go ahead and get that. And just like with the neck, even though this is totally in shadow, it's still going to have reflective light all around it. So it will still make uh, lighter and darker areas of shading to create the form. It's just that all those lighter and darker areas of shading will be, well, darker because they're in shadow. So remember on that value scale that we made, we made darker values to medium values to lighter values. Well, maybe you only go medium to dark, something that's in the shadows. Maybe something that's in the light, you go more just like uh, medium light to light. You don't go with those darker ones, you know. Okay, but in any case, so we've got this here. And I think we've got a little bit of shading right here. That's where that shadow is. This, of course, would be dark. And in fact, we'll make this really dark on this edge because there would be less and less light. Both it's on the shadow side and it's in the shadow. And what's more is we want to create contrast. We want to differentiate one thing from another. So by making that really dark in there, we're going to differentiate the one foot from the other foot. And once again here, making this a bit darker. Okay. And then it would cast this shadow. There would be a shadow in between these two feet right here.
I'll just give that a little bit stronger outline. You know, I said before, life doesn't come with outlines, but illustration can a little bit because that outline will really help to just separate one thing from another at times. But be careful with it. I mean, if you really want to draw photographically really realistic stuff, you're not going to have much in the way of outlines with that. Okay, a little bit stronger. Even like sub shadow from these legs right here. Darken that up a little bit. Okay, and then of course it's going to have this cast shadow here. So we'll make it darkest right here at the base. And we'll allow it to get a little bit lighter as it goes away. And we're just following those guidelines that we had laid out before where light is hitting things. Certainly don't want a strong outline on the shadow. That will really break the illusion. Now here, this arm is going to be in shadow for the most part. You can see where it would come out, start being outside the shadow long about here, right? Because these are your light lines coming off the head. So probably somewhere around here is where you're starting to get this back into the light. So everything under here would be in shadow. You just think about things logically. Boy, if it's one thing, just remember, always come back to it. Light goes in a straight line, so it's really easy to predict. You just got to think about things logically. Okay, this side here is going to be in shadow. And there we go. So I've shown you the basics of putting this guy together. You know, I could finish it up a little bit smooth everything out, making it all good. But anyways, if I was to continue to work on it, hopefully I'd get something a whole lot like this guy right here. But once again, maybe yours doesn't look anything at all like this. But what I want is I want the title Drawing 10, Combining Forms to Make Angular Things, in other words, geometric things. I want you to show the light, and I want you to do a nice, neat job showing the shading and the shadows.